All right. Ladies and gentlemen of the Lodge, we are back and we have guests. And I am very grateful to have these guests because this is probably the closest we've ever been to a case. Um, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Both physically and in terms of being able to speak to the people involved. So uh, here with me tonight, I have, I have Barb McKay, um, who is Tommy's mother. And off screen, I'm not sure how much he'll be participating, is, is uh, Tommy's stepfather, Tim Bush. So Barb, do you want to, uh, you know, say hello to everybody? Hello. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What so, you? <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, yeah. Usually, <laughs> it's it's weird. Usually, when we have guests, it's like you know, give me give me a bio, but that doesn't make sense here. Um, so, yeah. for for those of you watching tonight who haven't seen Friday's video, Tommy Booth was a resident of Wilmington, Delaware, but the location where uh, he went missing and was later found was what thirty minutes? Yeah, if that like 20 to 30 minutes from where Aiden and I live and even closer to where I grew up. Uh, he, he was found in Ridley Township in specifically Woodland, Pennsylvania. And I used to run track against uh, against Ridley's high school team. We played, I played football against teams from this area. You know, I, the Delaware, I grew up on the Delaware County line uh, with, with Radnor right there. So I don't know how familiar you became with Delaware County during all of this, but this is a case that is, it's our hometown. This is our backyard. Um, and when I, when I first heard about it, the thing that stuck out to me was how well traveled that area is, how, how densely populated it is. And the idea that somebody could be back there that long with nobody taking notice. And then as we dug into the research, I, I mean, there's, there's probably not a single smiley face killers case where it is more obvious that he was not in the water the night that they say he went missing. So, you know, I, I wanted to really quickly before, before we jump into anything else, uh, you know, Barb, could you, could you tell us a little bit about Tommy? Um, Tommy, he was, he was a good kid. I mean, yeah, he may have had some nefarious friends, but um, basically he was a good kid. He had never been in jail. Like, like they had, mm -hmm. uh, I know you mentioned he was a mama's boy. He was, and he was proud of that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he still lived here at home. Right. So um, he always, he was like our glue. He, and he always wanted to make everything better. Like if somebody wasn't getting along, he made sure that they got along. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, as far as, as far as what was publicly available about him, um, you know, obviously we know he had epilepsy. I yeah. was, was he, was that the only thing he was struggling with? And I, I asked that question as somebody who has been on medication for anxiety, depression. I, I was actually on Ativan, which is very similar to Xanax for a long time. So I know he was okay. prescribed Xanax. Well, he, um, and that, that, that's another thing. I'll tell you that when, um, sure. he only had epilepsy. It started the year before when he was 23. Mm -hmm. So it was really strange. He did have, um, WPW which is Wolf Parkinson White syndrome where he has an extra electrical pathway okay in his heart um, we didn't find that out until he had the first epileptic seizure and we went to the hospital and they took an EKG and mm -hmm. that's they found that he never really had a problem with it we did have go through an ablation with him in mm -hmm. his heart but um the Xanax, he was so anxious mm -hmm. about having an epileptic seizure because he did have one at work, you know, and he was just really anxious about it. And mm -hmm. so I called the neurologist and asked him if he could if he could prescribe something that would, you know, help him not be so upset about it. So the that's interesting. That's where, <clears throat> yeah, and that's where that came. And the funny thing is he had just gotten that like the month before. Okay, so he had not been on Xanax all that long. No. Gotcha. It, it was more specific. I was just saying it was more specifically prescribed due to his anxiety about his epilepsy more so yeah. than the mm -hmm. epilepsy itself. That's yeah. that actually I mean, I'm still shocked that they would prescribe a drug that has side effects of seizures, but uh under the circumstances, but it does make a lot more sense now knowing that that there was an actual reason and you know was this a was this like a daily or a take as needed kind of deal it was a take as needed okay which is definitely the safer way to take xanax under those circumstances um yeah i mean 
took his, you know, epileptic medicine, which I can't remember what it is or what, what he took, but yeah, it, it was, uh, the Xanax was for when he was upset about it. Yeah. That's, that makes complete sense to me. Um, yeah. I mean, it's risky, but I can understand why they would take that path. Uh, cause there's not really another option, I guess. But as far as his work goes, that was one thing that, that stuck out to me was the, the significant difference between his relationship with, uh, was it, was it Harry? As, as opposed to his relationship with his other friends, because it seemed like his relationship with Harry was that Harry kind of acted as a mentor and was a co-worker and sort of a, not necessarily a surrogate father figure, but like kind of a surrogate older brother figure to him. Is that correct? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Harry trained him in the drywall and um, helped him get into the union for it. So they worked together more. Mm -hmm. when, did he, when did he start with the, the drywalling career? Um, a couple of years after high school. Okay. So was he, did he want to go to college and decide against it or was he never into college? Like, no, he didn't want to go to college. He, he wanted to do the trade school thing. Um, smart. Honestly, <laughs> having, <laughs> having a college degree and so much debt, uh, smart choice. Um, well, he, he didn't want, he wasn't the type to sit in the office or, you know, something right. like that. Yeah. So he, it sounds like he enjoyed the work he did too. He did enjoy it. Yeah, it's I've I've done drywalling. It's actually there's something there's something soothing about it. It's putting a project together, yeah. getting it done, and moving on to the next thing. Right. Well, he was pretty artistic, and mm -hmm. he kind of felt like that was artistic as well. It is. You know, make it look the best that you can make it look. Yeah, definitely. And so, so he gets into his. Did did Harry get him into drywalling, or did he meet Harry after becoming a drywaller? No, he, Harry. Um, I'm not sure how he met Harry. Mm -hmm. Isn't it a thing? Yeah, like a I think temporary so. service. I don't know, but anyway, yeah, Harry yeah. took him on wing, and they got to be really good friends. Okay, so that was that would have been around the time that Tommy was what 20, 20 to twenty two. Well, yeah, probably twenty. Gotcha. So as for the other friends, though, the ones he was with that night. Mm -hmm. Where did how did he become friends with them? Was this a childhood kind of friendship or? Um, well, yeah, neighborhood type mm -hmm. thing. They, most of them went to school together. Like, gotcha. I had never met him before. Don't really knew um, the, the Elwood one. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon, you know, was just Chris's brother, and he would come over. I think he came over, like, one time. Mm -hmm. But Chris had been to our house several times. We have a pool table in the basement, and they'd all come over and shoot some pool down there. Got it. So... As, so these these friends of his had you were familiar with to an extent most of them yes and what was your what was your read on them um uh <laughs> i'm not sure well they were normal. normal they were just normal guys hanging out playing pool drinking beer just doing what knuckleheads do at 20 years old right okay. so there was never like uh yeah you had mentioned I think that some of them had been to jail. Yes, but I'm right. not sure. It's... Not sure which ones, but was that, I guess, was that like, what kind of offenses are we talking here, if you if you know? Probably drug mm -hmm. offenses. And, you know, that was the other thing. Tommy wasn't really into the drugs. Um, <laughs> he his, his drug of choice was alcohol. So the whole cocaine thing, that was from one of the detectives. We had an appointment to go see the tape at the bar at Bootleggers. Mm -hmm. And the whole time, I mean, soon as it started, his thing, it was a Detective Palo, his um, whole thing was, it was a, a drug deal gone bad. Mm -hmm. well, as far as I knew, Tommy didn't do drug deals. Not mm -hmm. saying he never did any drugs. Yeah. Um, you know, it actually, it was his brother that said, yeah, he did coke. Mm -hmm. But he didn't go like score coke. He didn't sell coke. You know, if somebody had it, maybe he would have do it. Yeah, which that, he liked to drink. You know, that that's what he liked to do. So, mm -hmm. so do you think when uh, you know in the in the documentary by by Kevin Gannon and Anthony Duarte, they mm -hmm. spoke to his uncle Brad. I uh, mm -hmm. from what I understand, Brad <laughs> is a retired uh, military colonel. Yes. Was it? Yeah, I think so. All right. So uh, he told he told Brad that 
his friends were into stuff that was worse than robbery. Do you think that that's that it, that drugs are what he considered worse than robbery? No, it was guns. It was the guns. Got it. it was, yes. All right. And so when when we say guns here, obviously, you know, I we have a wide range of viewers. I know myself, I I own several firearms, but it's in a, you know, I'm trained with them. I take them to the range and I shoot them there and then I bring them home in a case. I no, it- I, I'm pretty sure it was like selling guns. Okay, so we're talking about selling guns without a license kind of stuff. Guns, you know, I'm not sure, but yeah, whatever. He Because he didn't tell me that. But the one thing where he got that phone call and my intuition was to listen in and I didn't because I'm like, okay, and I'm trying to give him his privacy and stuff. Right. But that's one where, you know, he said, oh, no, man, I'd never do that. And mm-hmm. I found out later that on that phone call, they said they were going to come and shoot up our house. Oh. Yeah. I'd, so so how'd you find that out? Uh, that was Harry, right? Yeah. It was Harry. He received that phone call when he was in the truck with Harry, and Harry kind of grilled him after the phone call. Gotcha. Okay. So he he he... That's yeah. yeah, that's definitely relevant. I, I yeah. mean, I, I cannot imagine how you could have something like that and the police would would perform the way they did. They didn't listen to any of things that we had to say. They really didn't. And in fact, the FBI, I called the FBI in Wilmington because mm-hmm. um, we had a Wilmington, not a Wilmington, I guess, a, a, I think it was Newcastle County cop mm-hmm. assigned to our case. And I hadn't heard from him in over a week. So Mm -hmm. I called the FBI and asked them, you know, like, how do they get involved? And they said they have to be asked to be involved. And I told them that, you know, that it had been over a week and I hadn't even heard from this guy. And then, of Mm -hmm. course, later the day, the guy called me. But somehow it ended up being transferred to Ridley. And um, that's what we ended up with. Yeah. my When I was looking through it, my opinion of the the Ridley police situation was that you know, it, being a resident of this state, what it seemed like to me was that they looked at this and said, this is Delaware's problem, not ours. We just need to yeah. make sure this isn't a problem in Ridley. And once they realized, once they determined that this was not a something that had been done by a Ridley resident, they probably just said, all right, not our problem, washing my hands of this. Right. Well, you know, I talked to Scott a lot and he was the lieutenant detective on the case from mm-hmm. the first day. And he would always tell me that it was the um, captain that, you know, had put the kibosh on it. Mm -hmm. But they they did have um, Anthony Duarte and Mm -hmm. um, Kevin Gannon come down. Mm -hmm. And they ran tests and stuff on the creek with Dr. Gelman, Hellman. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, you know, I don't know whatever came of any of that. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, did Scott ever specify why the captain was kind of putting the kibosh on it, as you said? Um, no, he never really said. He just said that, you know, he wasn't allowed to do any more with that. So me thinking, okay, well, now Scott's going to be the captain. He's going to do something about it. Mm-hmm. But he didn't. He did at one point assign um, one of the detectives, Billy, to look into it. And I don't know if you remember, but Billy was the one that was found deceased in his car at the Wawa. Don't think we no. know about that. No, we did not know about that. That did yeah. not come up. Yeah, well, he had a heart attack. Okay. Um, shortly after Billy was going to look into all this stuff for us. So. Right, um, which still seems yeah. suspicious, but I mean, if uh, the heart yeah. attack is heart attack is hard to fake, I unless you're the so. CIA. Yeah. Uh, I mean. And, so I guess so. Let's so. What, walk us through, I guess, what what you know about the events of that night, because as far as we have from from what was available publicly. And by the way, we filed a right to know request with Ridley Township. They never oh. even replied to our email. There was no sorry, we can't. Usually if we do this, we hear back through whether it's FOIA, right to know, whatever we get. Uh, sorry, that's an open investigation. We can't give you that. Or here's the documents we can share. Or, oh, yeah, it's closed. Here's everything. In this case, we didn't even get a response. So... What we what we know is mostly based on what was in the case studies in Drowning Forensics book. Okay. Um, as far as we understand, there were three vehicles containing a total of nine people, including Tommy. Mm-hmm. There were eight females, two males. Reverse. 
No, otherwise. Eight males, two females. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that it was one of their birthdays. Um, I, I, would that have been Jessica? Yes. Okay. That would have been Chris's her. Girl. Her twenty first. Yes. Gotcha. So, do do you know that to be true? Was it actually her birthday? Yes. All right. So we know that they arrived at the bar shortly before eleven p.m. Uh, that they went in the front door all together and that this was all captured on a security camera, but this is the last time that evening that any camera captures uh, Tommy specifically. Yes. Where we have some gaps regarding that series of events is, did anybody leave through the front door? And if so, were they captured on camera? Or are we going entirely based on their statements? Do you, I mean, you may not know that, but if you do... Um, I'm gonna let Tim answer. <laughs> sure, go for it. Okay, so Chris and Brandon got no. It was mm -hmm. who was it? it? Was Chris and Elwood? No, Elwood was sitting in the lobby when Curtis and Chris got thrown out for smoking weed in the bathroom. Right. Mm -hmm. They went to the front door. Chris, uh, Elwood, Dave Elwood was sitting in the lobby. They waved to him through the glass window, mm -hmm. saying, hey, let's go. We got to go. Um, so that's the last time we see them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then at 11, uh, 11.30, Tim, uh, the bouncers say they think they saw Tommy go out the front side door, which would have been next to. Right. One third. They think at one thirty they saw. They thought they saw Tommy th leave with the birthday girl. Mm -hmm. One forty-five. Tim comes into the front lobby and through the front door in the lobby. He's looking at all the cameras. Looks all the way around. Kind of looks shaken up. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then he just kind of leaves. And that's mm -hmm. when he said that he went to go look for Tommy. Mm -hmm. um, and then apparently, according to the PIs. Um, all the, all the other participants went back to Chris's house. Um, Tim came back an hour and a half later than that mm -hmm. and said that he stopped at the McDonald's, which is all, off of 95. Right. And then that exit or two past Ridley. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so the other kids, um, Rob, the other kids, Rob and, um, Curtis, Curtis member and, and, uh, Elwood, they were all there. They were not decide we couldn't decide whether to, they couldn't decide whether to go in or out or mm -hmm. uh, it's on the video for did you get the video for the bar unfortunately no the only thing we had access to was what uh gannon and duarte put out publicly okay. we we could not get anything from ridley they refused to even talk to us i called them okay. and they wouldn't pick up the phone now, see, yeah. when scott was there anything i asked him to give to somebody he would do that interesting yeah, Scott and I got, you know, we were, I always considered us to be friends after mm -hmm. all that, you know, that we had been through. And, you know, he was pretty nice about that. But anytime I'd say, interview the guys again, or, you know, you didn't interview the girls. And mm -hmm. he's like, I can't make them come up here. Right. Yeah. I mean, but you would, you would think that he could send somebody down at the very least, yeah. right? I didn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't. Yeah. He didn't. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I, uh, I have friends. I do have friends in who are from Delaware and have connections. So I may, I may be asking some people, some things, uh, given, given what you've said. Um, I, I think, uh, beyond, beyond them leaving the bar, mm -hmm. the, the one thing that, that came to mind as I was looking through everything, I, uh, around the time they were supposed to be leaving was the cell phone records because from what I understand, they checked Tommy's pings and there were three yeah. calls. One was to a backdoor phone number to check your own voicemail, according to Canon and Duarte, which okay. is just so far before our time as adults <laughs> that it didn't even click. Uh, the one that really struck me as interesting, though, was that I uh, allegedly... They were all at the bar until 1 a.m. But oh. the second call came to Tommy's phone. And but I also came across the information that the detectives had entirely the wrong area code for Tommy's phone number and thought it was a 610, which is our area code. Exactly. Uh, which is just mind boggling to me. But the second call 
the, the call he received was okay. from a, a Verizon landline registered to the driver of the second vehicle's house, according to Gannon and Duarte's work. That would have been Stoner. Yeah, that was Stoner. Okay, so that was Robert. Okay, and did they all live? Uh, did they all live on their own, or were these guys still living with their parents? A lot of them were living with their parents. Yeah. Okay. If they all, except for Chris, Chris and his girlfriend, they lived on their own. Together. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I have all of Tommy's um, phone records. Right. And one of the calls that came in, I thought was his cell phone. To, and it was from Rob, because mm -hmm. I remember thinking Rob was the only one that even called Tommy to tell them they were leaving. Right. But, you know, the look of it, I guess it was very short. He didn't answer the phone because mm -hmm. I'm thinking at that time he was already gone to wherever they took him. Yeah, the I was, I was very interested by where the 12.59 a.m. phone call pinged. It was a tower to the east of the bar. It should have been the tower to the north of the bar. Um, tower east of the bar was a lot closer to I-95, which suggests to me that Tommy was probably either on his way to or on I-95 when that phone call was made, oh. which, of course, brings up a whole host of other questions. Um, right. I mean, do you have, is there anything that, that sticks out to you? Mm, so no, not, not at the moment, no. I think as we go, more will pop up. Yeah. Did you have, do you have a chance to, uh, to go up to bootleggers and look around? Because it's not there anymore. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we go up every year. I go up to the creek every year on January 20th because to me, oh, that was the day. Well, that was the last day anybody saw him. So to mm -hmm. me, I use that as his date of death. You missed us by four days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were almost right there at the same time as you. Um, yeah, that's the same because um, we have a cross up there too because um, you said that uh, he was found on the opposite side of the mm -hmm. creek. But wasn't he was, found he was. On the same side. so the water level must get a lot lower in the summer oh. it's a tidal creek mm -hmm. so yeah. the tide goes up the stream and then it turns around and comes back down the stream mm -hmm. um so yeah it 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 it, it fluctuates quite yeah. a bit which is why one of the reasons originally before all this stuff happened is why we thought he was put in there to be washed out mm -hmm. Yeah, that was there were there were two possibilities that stuck out to me regarding why he was in the, the creek, because in my opinion, there's zero possibility he was in that creek on the 20th. And I, I think he was I, I think that Kevin Gannon and Anthony Duarte and, and everybody involved on your side is correct in saying he went in there the night of February 2nd um, or early in the morning on February 3rd. Uh -huh. Yes, I think either they intended for him to wash out into the Delaware or they were hoping to stage it as an accidental drowning. Um, exactly. Which, in my, in my opinion, I think accidental drowning staging is, is exactly yeah. what they were going for, because that explains yeah. why they were at the bar in the first place. Yes. Um, well, and also the, the two twigs from... Yeah, the twigs were weird. Yes, they yes. were. They yeah. were. Like, I, I mean, it, it, so that, that was actually what, to me, said this was staged as an accidental drowning instead of them trying to put him out into the water. Because it looked to me like they were trying to pin him in place with something that looked just natural enough that it was feasible he ended up there. Right. Um, right. So have you... I think, you were, I think you were right when you said in your other thing that um, there was enough heat on the kids that he needed to be found then before mm -hmm. there was more heat. Yeah, I, I think they were... The eyes and whatever. Yeah, it seemed very much to me like he he showed up there because they needed... They needed this investigation to be over. I do uh -huh. wonder if they intended to put him in that creek in the first place. Uh, the fact that they went to bootleggers in the first place does lead me to believe that that had something to do with it, uh, considering it is basically just over the state line and the very first bar with a creek next to it uh, that you right. come across, which is not right. a particularly infrequent thing in southeastern Pennsylvania. That we There is a creek right there outside of my home, and there is a bar right there outside of my home. Uh. So... This creek's a lot more angry. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, we live on the grounds of an old steel mill and uh, it was built up with uh, rocks on either side for them to kind of keep it in place. And when it floods, it just goes straight up. So it's like 20 yeah. feet of just funneling. Terrifying. Water. And yeah. it goes right into the Schuylkill, which you hope you die before you get into the Schuylkill because it's gross. Um, right. But yeah, so uh, were you were you able to go into the bar? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about it? 
Um, you mean that during that time? Mm -hmm. There were several rooms. There was a, a band room with a stage. There was a DJ room, which is where Tommy was. Mm -hmm. Is that the uh, hip hop we, room they reference? Yeah. Um, there was a hip hop room. Um, oh, let me check my notes. We did sure. talk to the bouncers that were serving him that night. Mm -hmm. um, oh, where is it? Um, I don't know what part of it is right at the moment. I'm just scanning my notes. Sure. Um, but yeah, he was sitting at a bar, which wasn't very overly crowded. Um, with a couple of people in there and the, the bartender said that, you know, yeah, he drank a few beers, but he wasn't, you know, hand over fist. He wasn't, you know, sloppy drunk or drunk when he left. Um, he was very polite, they said. Um, but yeah, there, there, the layout of the club was is that there was several different rooms. Like I said, there was a bar, a mm -hmm. hip hop. There was like a tavern type situation. Uh, so there were multiple areas for you to go hang out in whatever flipped your. So you said oh, you said it was just a few beers. Mm -mm, beers. Or he was doing shots of gold schlager. Oh, sorry, it's my soul. <laughs> um, so do we do we know like where, was he doing shots or was he having you know his friends bought a round of shots every half hour? No, he was pretty much there by himself. Yeah. The other guys were in different rooms. Oh, wow. He, he was in the room, the back room, that I thought led to the back where mm -hmm. they took the shower. Mm -hmm. So the, was... the immediate thing there that sticks out to me is that if he was, if he only had a, a few drinks total, were like, I'd say less than six, mm -hmm. I, I, his blood alcohol content when they found him was 0.22. Right. Which is just for a guy his size, uh -huh. I I don't see a way where y even after you're in the water for a little while and you you start to decompose and the the blood alcohol content starts to go up, it, as we see with basically every single one of these cases, they're found and their blood alcohol is probably twice what it was. Um, at no way you're at point two two at his size and weight at at that right. point, right? Right. You you mentioned that. The bartender said he was very polite, but that he was by himself. Did, you know, in an interview with that bartender, was there ever any indication of what his disposition was like that night or why he was alone when he was there with so many friends, supposedly? Um, apparently he was there with Jessica, the birthday girl. Mm -hmm. And they had said that, you know, they were just kind of partying and, and she was dancing on the dance floor or whatever. Uh, area and you know they didn't really see anything abnormal about it. He he wasn't a problem. He he wasn't like drunk drunk. He he they just kind of was like, hey, there's a guy sitting at the bar while you know his friends or one of the two girls or whatever were over there dancing on the dance floor. Mm -hmm. They all kind of separated once once they they got in there. So, yeah, it just it makes me wonder why you know why the why the separation occurred, especially if they're celebrating someone's birthday. You would think logically you'd all stay together for the purpose of the birthday, but that just makes me feel like mm -hmm. there may have been some inclination that, you know, maybe outsiders didn't recognize it, but maybe he realized something was off or somebody, you know, things were just off in the group. It, that may have been their normal dynamic, but to me that just appears weird given the circumstances. Right, right. Do you have any inkling as to why bootleggers was chosen? No, because um, he was told they were going to bank shots, which was around here. And he had to borrow a button down shirt from Chris. Because mm -hmm. he was expecting to go to a, a bar in Delaware. Yeah. So it was a pool. pool. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So he had no idea that that's where they were going. So that's interesting because the two stories that was it was it Tim was the driver of Tommy's car? Yes. Yeah, so the stories that he told the cops were all contradictory, but I mean, the well, the one that sticks out is that he had said they found, they initially all said they found the bar online, but Tim had told somebody, I think maybe it was the PI, 
that he knew people from the bar, not at the bar, from the bar. Right. Well, so, that's what we were told, too. We were told Tim had been there before. Mm -hmm, which kind of blows that the we found it online thing out of the water. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's not true. Because <laughs> when there was a fight or something in the, um, in the parking lot, he knew some of the people that were there. He went right. Yeah. So... Uh, I mean, what was what was the name of the bar you said they were supposed to be going to? It's Bank called Bank Shots. Bank Shots, and that's uh, it is that still Union. there? No, it's the one on Union okay. Street. Uh, is it no. uh, in Newark? No, no, in Wilmington. In Wilmington, or on Union Street, which would have been close to Chris's house. Yeah. All right. So if it looks like it's not there anymore, oh, okay. Um, but I just wanted to kind of take a look at if I can. Bank shots hey. bar Wilmington D. Uh, there we go. Cause there's I'm gonna one go Stanton. snag it. Interesting. There's one, in, there's one in Stanton. Yeah, the one. Well, so the what really? Oh no, it's bank seafood. That's not the right thing. Um, bank shot. I just want to find the address, and and there, I promise there's a reason for this. Um, all right. So now. Interesting. It's also near a creek. It's not as close to a creek, but it's near a creek. Um, which I mean, I my my opinion as it stands currently, looking at everything, is that the uh, the reason they chose that bar was the creek. I think. I think that the the plan that night was to, you know, put him in a place where they could dump a body later and have it look like an accident. Um, right. you know. And across state lines, really, I mean, the communication between the two police departments, yeah, really, really, if you take somebody across state lines and you do that, um, you pretty much have commit, you, you, they're not going to investigate. Yeah, it's, which in my opinion, between the the drug running connection, the gun running connection, and the fact that it was across state lines, uh, it almost seems to me like the police didn't want the FBI involved, because those right there are three things that the FBI can immediately involve itself in. Um, so, I mean, the FBI has jurisdiction across, over anything that occurs across state lines. Uh, they usually don't do missing persons unless it's a missing child or they think it's gang violence related, like organized crime. Okay. But in my, I mean, looking at this, I, I mean, this seems like, like, like organized crime, right? Yeah. Is there, uh, I guess one thing I was trying to figure out, but, uh, the internet seems to think it's a little bit silly if you look up, uh, organized crime in Delaware for some reason. Um, as if there's not organized crime in Philly and Baltimore. Uh, it, do you, is, is there like any sort of problem that you guys are aware of? For organized crime? Yeah. Like, are there, are, are there gangs in the area? Not really. Not that okay. I know of. Mm -mm. I mean, there probably are Wilmington. I mean, you know, the, the, the murder, murdered capita percentage is really high, but yeah. as far as like gang gangs that we have to worry about here, no. Yeah, so I guess uh, the neighborhood that that w was everybody from generally the same neighborhood here. At um, one point, at at yeah, Richardson Park. Okay, and what's we had there? We weren't living there at the time, but that's where most of them came from. What's uh, what's that area like? Uh, well, you got half of it is okay, and the other half is pretty. Uh... It's low middle income. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I I'm. I get what you're saying. Uh, um, picking up what you're putting down. So whatever they were involved in, you don't think you don't think they were involved in a any sort of full scale gang, but maybe they were they were doing stuff kind of on their own as a group. No, I think they were involved with somebody, mm -hmm. but I don't know what. I mean, like Jessica said, Chris, well, Chris um, sold coke. Okay, and so it was Chris's boss that boss mm -hmm. that ordered the hit on tommy got it according, according to her, according to her. Yeah. so that's that's very interesting to me that she said that to the pi right and, and that wasn't enough for the that. police <laughs> like I, 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 old scott too but you know it was like i couldn't get anybody to do anything it's just so strange um mm -hmm. what do you I know mean, what chris did for his day job I'm sorry, what's that? Do you know what Chris did for his day job? 
construction, I think. Or... Construction roofing. We... Were a lot of them in construction? A lot of the men? No. <sighs> no. Uh, let's see, Rob and Curtis were just menial labor jobs. I think Curtis was like a, uh, a prep chef. I don't know what Rob did. I don't know what Dave did. Um, I don't know what the girls did. It, it, Chris is the only one that I knew, only for the fact that he worked in the building next to mine. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So I knew what he was doing. Yeah. Hmm. So you knew Chris too. I mean, we knew him for years. Yeah, I mean, have have you had any interaction with with the other eight since then? Not really. No. Mm -hmm. Uh, did, 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 were they invited to the funeral? No. Gotcha. So was it, was it, was that deliberate or was it just a very small, like family only kind no, of ceremony? it was deliberate. I okay. told Chris that I didn't want any of them that left him at that bar to come, but they did. So they did come. Right. But the cops were there and they didn't let him in. Gotcha. What was but, I, what was the demeanor? If you recall. It was more like 30 or 40 of them that all kind of rushed. Other the friends time. didn't know. Got it. And brought that Chris along with them. Right. They didn't know Chris was told not to come. Got it. So. But I did. Their demeanor was Chris said out there with all the kids that somebody ought to slap my fat bitch in the face talking about me. Interesting. Because because they couldn't come in. Yeah, that's his demeanor. He also told me that, you know, he, that Tommy was a man of 24 and they weren't his babysitters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, all of that to me sounds like a guilty conscience. Um, it's yeah. just, oh, we're not that. his babysitters. Yeah. If, if I took you to a bar and you turned up dead in the creek two weeks later, I would feel horrible. Like it would be the absolute, I, I can't even comprehend how that would affect me and yeah or, or like how you would interact with my mom at, at that point yeah no i mean i if your mom told me i wasn't invited to the funeral because i didn't take care of you i'd probably understand um then again i'm not a drug dealer um so right. I, different standards there yeah i mean yeah. is there so i guess is there anything anything major that we missed um or that the that gannon and duarte missed or anything that, that you think was a, an important detail that people haven't covered? Um, that you haven't covered? Mm. Or you no, haven't you... gotten enough attention? The information is there. It's just that everything hasn't gone forward. Mm -hmm. It just kind of, just kind of stopped. Oh, uh, one thing is uh, Dr. Helmet mm -hmm. told me that he marked it as undetermined drowning. Mm -hmm. So that keeps the case open got it so it's not closed um and he said you know he he thought that he felt that he drowned and but he didn't know why mm -hmm. how he drowned he said he did tell me he must have been unconscious so i i do believe they drugged him he must have been unconscious when he died yes got it or you know, drowning mm -hmm. in that creek is was his assessment, assessment. got it yeah. So, hmm. but of all the smiley face killers, there were only two Emmys that actually signed off and said that they were unconfirmed. Tommy was one, and Guy was the other, yeah. and this had to go to court to get that switched. Yeah, the that was, I mean, one hundred percent. Looking at this, that was what popped out to me immediately as as I was wrapping up. Was this is point for point, Todd Guy. At every single level we have the there's a physical obstruction between him and where he was found uh, uh -huh. he was not drinking particularly enough for people to think he was going to be sloppy or to even match yeah. what the levels were upon you know finding them yeah he right. had no major visible injuries i uh, i think i think todd guy also had no water in his lungs um oh. i mean this this was like point for point for point for point um very very similar to it which yeah that's that's why they grouped it, the the different documentaries as they did mm -hmm. Tommy and todd's were very similar yeah it was very shocking funny. to me yeah yeah the uh 
trying to think. There, there was something like on the tip of my tongue, and now I'm unable to recall what it was. Uh, One question that I had was, um, I think it was, was it Bill? who was the, the friend who was yeah. essentially patrolling the area? When? Actually, that was Tim's friend. Okay. Mm -hmm. The co-worker that used to live up there. Got it. Thank you multiple times, once by Bill, once by Harry, once by us. Uh, so in the two weeks that he was missing, not only did the, the three of us search that creek, um, the one lady with the dogs searched okay. it. Yeah, there was one group that searched it the first weekend mm -hmm. um and then the I'm next married. week i guess i had gone to the private investigator mm -hmm. and he told me to have a grid search done so that's when i looked up the philadelphia search and rescue and i had to get scott to um call them and set it up even though i did all the work but the, um the police didn't do that. I, I was under the impression, the assumption that the police set up the search and rescue effort. Are you telling me that they didn't even bother? No, they didn't do really anything the time he was missing. I was home with my cell phone in one hand and my home phone in the other hand, trying to do different things. Now, somebody said they saw him up at the Wawa. That's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. But um, So I called Scott. So he did send somebody up there to, you know, look at the film, but you know, he wasn't there. So like anything I would ask him to do, he would do, but doing anything on their own. No, they did not. I called both search and rescue places. And just, and to what level of, you know, I guess granularity, I could say, uh, was this different searches that people went through, you know, I mean, you know, obviously with multiple searches over the course of the time between when he went missing and when he was found. I mean, did mm -hmm. people check that area like foot by foot or was it, you know, what was kind of the level of detail? Walking down the bank. Yeah, they walked up and down the bank and they walked um, the sidewalks around the area going to like 95 and, and we did that as well. And the first Saturday we had a group of, I don't know how many 50. people, 50 people or so, a family and friends, you know, just walking around. I, I made a, a copy of um, the, the map and everybody took section and, and walked around it and posted the flyers and, you know, we looked. Mm -hmm. And that- People um, actually knocked on doors. Yeah, people knocked on doors. And then on Sunday is when the, the search and rescue they might have been there earlier too, mm -hmm. but the thing with the search and rescue, they're tr they were training. They didn't have like a whole thing like Philadelphia search and rescue did. Right, they were military. Yeah, and that was like that was the grid type search. So the I, I finally remembered what it was that I wanted to ask. I, uh, you guys were there the twenty second, correct? That's the first time, the first day you made it out. Twenty second. Say. Um, day 21st. 21st, we 21st. went up and filed the mis missing person report. Yeah, but as for taking a look at the creek. Oh, yes. Okay, so. Yeah, every, every day, except for, I think, the following Thursday, um, I went to work. I mm -hmm. tried to, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, well, I mean, can't blame no, you for didn't. not being we, able to make it. One day, the 22nd, we didn't because... Brandon and Tim came over and and that was at, that, but that was at six p.m. Yeah, that was at six. So I, I want to come back to that in just a second. But when you were up there, the state of the creek, how frozen over was it? It wasn't. It so, was seventeen degrees when he went missing, so it was freezing. But it the temperature rose to fifty by the mm -hmm. week following weekend um but during the week it was the temperature rose yeah. so there was ice there but you could not see him so then the other theory was is that it was so thick that there was two layers of ice mm -hmm. and that he was trapped under the first layer of ice and that he had sunk and got frozen got stuck under that and then once the temperature rose he finally 
busted loose and floated downstream. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't believe that because we just didn't think that the uh, that the ice was enough for that long for that to happen. Right. So so visibly looking at the creek, there there was a sheet of ice on top of it at first. At parts of parts it. of it. So not the entire could... creek. No. No, there are, there is parts where the water moves fast enough that it will not freeze over in that short of time in that temperature. Right. And the creek was like two feet deep. You could see the bottom. Yeah, which is similar to how it looked when we went down there. It was the, right, the deepest right. areas were maybe like four feet, but uh, around around where he would have had to have fallen in, if that's what happened, it was not deep at all. And I mean, the, that was he, the thing that we were looking at. Go on. He wouldn't have fallen in. He, Tommy didn't like water, number one. And, um, you know, the detectives were saying, oh, maybe he went down there to go to the bathroom. I mean, who? some guy comes out of a bar, they're not going to like, oh, there's some water, let me go down there to pee. Yeah, no. You know? <laughs> they're going to pee on a bush or a wall or yeah. whatever. That was a lot. That was something that we saw a lot of comments on was, oh, maybe you just went to take a leak in the creek. And I'm like. I know, that's what they keep saying. Come on, man. Like, oh, they don't no. do that. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there were several bushes. There was a tree line. There was a wall. I, I mean. No, mm -hmm. that, that's and that cement abutment there, right when you came out of the back of the um, the bar. If you came out that way, where they take the trash out. Yeah, yeah. it's or even just one of the dumpsters you can mm -hmm. stand next to or behind or something. Yeah, who would do that? Yeah, so I and guess why? Why don't you? You know, I mean, Tommy didn't smoke. That was the other thing I mm -hmm. wanted to type. So, yeah, yeah, a burn mark on his hand, and mm -hmm. also he he was in a car accident the week before. Mm -hmm. That was the um, the injuries to his legs, his knee especially. Do you know that these are not directly connected? But do you do you recall what his Xanax prescribed dosage was, or when he last took it? Um, I don't because you know, I mean, he was twenty four. He took his own medicine. Yeah, I'm thinking. I don't think the dosage was very much. It was either point two five or point five. Oh, that is low. Yeah. That's it was just to, you know, help with the anxiety of it. Yeah, that's uh that that does not strike me as enough to if he took it like during work that day, if his concern was I don't want to have a seizure at work and he took point two five or point five at during the work day, he would not be that it I mean it's it's not out of your system in six hours, but it's I think Xanax is the longest last night, I think it's eight. But also with that low of a level of prescription, it's really yeah. not going to do all that much. Yeah, and I, I was prescribed. I, I had a daily Ativan prescription uh, throughout most of college, and I would I would still drink, and it was not. I, I was no different, and I'm I'm five right. nine. I was 170 pounds. Like I'm I'm not a big dude. So, you know, it's to to me the Xanax doesn't seem like it would have been a factor. But I just had to I had to clarify on that one because I I, I have had too much to drink and too much of my Ativan before and it made me stare at a wall for a while I uh, which isn't going into a creek it's it's the exact opposite of that but people respond differently to drugs sometimes uh but what I wanted to circle back to really quick before we get into the, the Q&A session of things um you said that Tim and another another name Rob Rob yeah yeah you Rob. said that they came by on the 22nd around 6 p.m. Right. So oh, Brandon came by. Brandon. Okay. So what I, what we was that about, I guess? Chris's, Chris's um, brother. Mm -hmm. Do you have any recollection of, of what was said, how they um, seemed? Well, yeah, that's about the, the three, three girls. Oh, no, that, this was about, I wanted his jacket back. Mm -hmm. It was left in Tim's, Tim's car. car. Mm -hmm. So, and um, Brandon came over and gave me the jacket and I asked him to look for his cell phone but of course that wasn't there and I just looked at at Tim and I'm like how could you just leave him there mm -hmm. and he just like had a weird look on his face he never answered they me. also said that he they, they he was hanging out with three girls and they thought he left with them oh okay yeah well, I, I, re I read about that and what I Gannon and Duarte said that either the the I think they said the detectives went back and interviewed those girls and they were like we barely remember him. Well, they, they said it was three Spanish girls. Yeah, and it and then Chris 
gave me their names. And um, I actually, Scott said, you know, he had his detectives call and, you know, they, they kind of remembered him, but, mm -hmm. you know, they really, they weren't that engaged with him. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm they thinking talked I'm... for a little bit and that was, that was about it. Yeah. Then they left and then Brandon called back later and said that one of the bouncers there, his name was Bill, was at the, they were all part of the five points fire hall. Mm -hmm. Um, and he said that we could meet with them. So we went over there that night and met with Bill, who was one of the bouncers, so they say. And he confirmed the fact that he he remembers Tommy leaving with three girls. Yeah, which was all a big smoke screen as well. Bunch of lies. So so this 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 Bill who was allegedly a bouncer, is that a different person from the bouncer who said that he saw the saw Tommy leave with the birthday girl? Correct. Yes. Okay. Well, I yeah. think his name I is also know. Bill, was it? Am I, no. am I just drawing that uh, out of someone? That, that, I might be drawing that out of thin air. Don't, don't mind me. The first Bill was Tim's friend. Bill yeah. Okay. That's probably. Was, yeah. Bill the bouncer was um, part of the um, Five Points Firehouse, mm -hmm. as was Brandon and Tim. And Tim. So basically, they had their friend cook yes. up a story for him. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Um, I, I am. He was there. I am furious with the Ridley Police Department. Uh, they will be getting. A visit, a physical in-person visit with a printed out right to know form. Um, well, you know what? None of the people that were around when this happened are there. Good. That means they might actually give me what I want. Uh, <laughs> you know, okay. we'll, we'll see how we it, that's the thing them. is if, if everybody who was involved in the investigation is gone, yeah. hopefully they'll be willing to say, all right, well, this doesn't come down on any of us. So here you go. Well, well, if, you know, they need my permission, which they always seem to with Scott, I, you know, he feel free to call me and All right. I will. Get I will. I also, I, I can dig up an old connection at the, the Vidoc Society mm. in Philly. Um, when we, when we covered the boy in the box case, we got a call from an international detective organization telling us that we were in the right church, wrong pew, which was surreal, but actually like, oh. I was like, oh, this is somebody I might be able to call in the future and ask for help. Yeah. Um, oh. Because they're like an international, they, they help with. They help the FBI, they help Interpol, like wild kind of stuff. But maybe they can uh maybe they can get the gears turning. Um I mean, is there uh is there anything else that comes to mind for you before we go to Q and A? I mean the it's less questions and more just like, you know, what could we do moving forward, honestly? You know, I mean obviously we can go show up with a you know, mm -hmm. the request and get the information that we can, but it's like, you know, would would access to, you know, a, a, a lawyer to kind of champion you guys help or, you know, is there, is there some way that we might be able to get these gears turning that, you know, mm -hmm. we could find out that that's where my head is. Yeah, I mean, like, what are the next steps we need to do? If we could find a way to try and raise you guys some money to get a, a PI on it, is that something that you would be interested in? Yeah. yeah. I'd like to use the same guy that we use cause he was really good. All right. Yeah. I mean, do, do you have any, any idea of what kind of, what it would cost? Nowadays? No, I don't know. All right. Well, if you can, if you can get a quote from him, then, you know, I can, I can do my best to leverage this community. There's, I mean, there's 600 people watching live right now, but we've got 380 some thousand people who watch the channel. So I'm hoping that, it, you know, if every one of them donated a dollar, this would get solved. Uh, <laughs> which, you know, yeah. is maybe, maybe we can, Maybe we can convince that to happen. Um, but at the very least, I, I definitely, uh, I'm definitely going to make some phone calls and and see what I can do to scrounge up uh, some financial support so you guys can go and and get this looked further into. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just like, I, I, there's 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 so many things about this that make me unbelievably angry, and I would I would love to talk to you again, you know, privately when I have a chance to collect some more thoughts and have some more pointed questions and I can email them or we can, I can make the drive down to Wilmington. Um, or you can call me or I can come up to, I mean, if you're going back to the Creek or whatever, I can show you where he was found. That would actually be incredible, especially when we go to do the, the update video, looking at all the cases and you know, how do these yeah. connect? Um, Just like, it's about 45 minutes from here. So yeah. it's not that bad. Yeah, no, it's, I, I used to date a girl who lived down in, in Newark. It's, easy drive um so yeah. i don't i don't mind coming down to you guys and uh if you guys want to come up here 
absolutely let me know and I will see what I can do about money. But let's now, since we are about at 8 p.m. and I want to let you guys go soon and also get this this out of the way because we got we to gotta finish up filming after this. Yes. Uh, so the first one that came in at the start of the show is from Sean Easton for 499. Thank you. Saying, hey, y'all, there was a comment on your last vid from a mortician letting you know that the cold water above freezing could preserve a body. Good content. Yes. Yes. So I uh, definitely can can slow decomposition. The issue was that I uh, the condition in which Tommy's body was found, he would have had to have been frozen solid in order to not decompose at all. Yeah. Uh, Kellen, the official data for $10 says, I would just like to say, and I believe I speak for all the chat, we are sorry for your loss and we hope you find answers in peace. And yeah, I think that's very accurate for all of us here. Yeah. We're, we're going to do whatever we can to help with the answers aspect. Yeah. Uh, the White Trash Panda for $5.56 saying, one, sympathy to the family, and two, I love that you can tell the Aidens are actually care and this isn't another case or piece of content. Respect, my dudes. We appreciate it. You know, yeah. so uh, we... We take it as, as seriously as as I think possible. Uh, Definitely, in our opinions. Ryan Wickup for thirteen fifty two. Uh, thank you. Uh, wishing the best for Tommy's parents. I hope you two can get the answers you're looking for. Thank you, boys, for hosting them. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and thank you to them yeah. for being here. We would do this with every single family involved if we could. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I mean, I uh, Barb. Um, I, I assume your camera's just off, but uh, yeah, Barb, if you. If you would like to put us in touch with anybody else uh, to talk about these cases, we would absolutely do podcast interviews. We'd be happy to do sit down kind of stuff um, if we can manage to get ourselves out that way for the ones that are further away. But it, we we want to we want to be another voice because I know I know Gannon and Duarte are working their asses off on this, but at the same time, it it never hurts to have additional handles and and people out there i think did isaiah do a video on this i don't know if he did on this i think he did so uh we also have a friend who um is much bigger than we are who we can we can reach out to and, and give him some details if he wants to update his stuff on it yeah absolutely okay, yeah i can i can get a hold of the, the moms that would be phenomenal yeah that'd be great uh, the cast man 777 for ten dollars says hello just found your channel last week and saw the 411 episode about this case my question is that if the alleged perpetrators cross state lines, shouldn't the feds get involved? Yep. They, they should. They sure should. They absolutely should. <laughs> that is their job, but I mean, local police do have a bit of an ego thing when it comes to the feds sometimes. So, especially in an area like Ridley, which I'm sure has a corruption problem. I mean, that's oh, yeah. that. that is the other thing involved here is Ridley is, it's not the worst area in southeastern pennsylvania but it's also you know it's right next to chester <laughs> it's right next to crumlin it, it is it, i would not be shocked at all if there was a reason the cops tried to shut down the investigation um and if there was a reason they didn't want federal help because the moment they accept federal help they're going to get investigated themselves to an extent no oh. Uh, flight risk for two dollars says for the support. Thank you. Uh, Pat Petrolis, son of Mayonetis, uh, for ninety nine ninety nine oh, wow, says, I love what you guys do, and hopefully we'll, we'll get answers soon. Thank you very much for the donation. Yeah. Uh, Goosey for two dollars says for the support, uh, and then Jossie for two dollars. Uh, opinion on the Phoenix lights? Not familiar enough to have an opinion. Fair enough. Unfortunately, but um, I will. I will also see what we can do to. Uh, funnel funnel some of the some if not all of the super chat money from tonight over to you guys um yep. i want i don't know what the tax layout is for that but hopefully i can if nothing else then we will donate it to to a gofundme if if we set that up um and, and if you want to set up a gofundme and we can just share it um or we can help you set something up and and we will make sure to to donate proceeds um and hopefully you know Hopefully we can get a lot more attention on this. Yeah, that would be the goal. Uh, that's it yeah, for super wanna, chats at the moment. Since we got time, do you want to take a look through the non-super chats? And sure. I can um, do the same. Um, see if there's anything important that came up. Uh, ah, so that is that is one thing that uh, somebody asked, hey, is there a way to see the autopsy report and photos, or do you need special uh, access 
So that that is one question I had is, uh, are you allowed to share any, did they share any documents with you and are you allowed to share them? Me? I, uh, yeah, I have the autopsy. Okay, is, is that something that you'd be willing to give us a copy of? Sure. That would yeah. be phenomenal. I give you, I'll give you anything you need that I have. We also have a video from the club, but it was reformatted and it's hard to see. So somebody with some video mm. background may be able to unlock the entire thing. Interesting. Yeah, depending on what the file type is. I mean, yeah. video is my, my job and my profession. That's what I went to school for. So I could at the very least give it a shot. I'm also okay. sure there is somebody in our Discord who knows how to do all sorts of weird stuff. Yeah. Um, it's on three CDs. Um, right, 2008. We can't really see it. So I don't know what format it is. So what do, you, what do you mean you can't really see it? Well, when it shows up on the on the on my laptop, it's mm -hmm. basically about a two and a half inch by two and a half inch thing, and I can't seem to make it any bigger. So I comb through it with a magnifying glass, <laughs> and I. The things that we saw earlier, uh, I can't find again. Mm -hmm. um, mainly, like I have on that video somewhere is Tim coming in at the one thirty mark or one forty five mark, saying that he searched for Tim. I mean for Tommy, mm -hmm. and uh, and I always wanted to look th at that again, but I can't seem to find it because it's so small and hard to see. Hmm. And there are other things that yeah, are on the video. Too, that we we saw different people that we thought we knew um, that we didn't think were supposed to be there that we wanted to look at again. Yeah. So do you know when you open the Mono computer, do you know what file type it is? Like what the, 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 the dot. At the, if you if you could text it to me, then we can we can definitely take a look at that. And I would be shocked if Aiden can't find a way to blow it up into into a bigger size. Yeah, or I mean, some of the editing software that I use, I would be able to essentially enlarge it possibly uh, if I can take the file from the disk and bring it onto the computer. Uh, yeah. But yeah. There, there was one thing about the autopsy report that I was curious about as well, which was uh, there's there's a blurred out section. Um, obviously, if you guys are going to send it along, then I can look at it myself. But just while we're here, um, there's a blurred out section after the, the cause of death where it says uh, that it was, uh, I think accidental drowning associated with mixed ethanol intoxication and then a blurred out section um is that is that something that was blurred out for privacy reasons do you do you know what it is or is that something that just it, it's okay. too hang on i'll go grab it sure sure thing um it wasn't for privacy reasons mm -hmm. you know it would have been something that they would have done gotcha um Unfortunately, it's probably going to take her a couple of minutes to go find it. No, that's that's perfectly fine. Yeah. We did get two more quick super chats in the meantime. Uh, Imagine uh, for two dollars. Have you guys heard of the Beast of Bray Road, yes. In Wisconsin? Yes. Very associated with uh, all of the alleged dogman sightings across yes. the Midwest, which are interesting considering that Native Americans have stories of these things called adlets, which are, in effect, dogmen who live in the wilds of Canada. But... <laughs> Yeah, it's the folklore is a wild, wild thing. It very much is. And then Miss Mori for two dollars says tight on money this week, but this needed support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you know, uh, how uh, how long how long have you been involved in Tommy's life? Um, uh, uh, since he was seven or eight. Gotcha. So so you you knew the kid very well. He's 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 your son. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, ugh, I, okay. I just. I'm, I'm back. Do you know where it was on the autopsy? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> it looks like it was towards the end. The page was half finished. Yeah. Um, but I probably. Might be able to find a image of it. Somewhere. No, nope, not here. Um... Here it is. Oh. Okay, so probable drowning associated with mixed ethanol intoxication. It was after that? Yeah, that's, that's the... flash alprazolam usage. 
Gotcha. So that was the Xanax. So that so hmm. Hmm. Hmm, Ganon. Hmm. Um yeah, I we can we can go into that later. I <laughs> why well, I think that's weird. But I uh, you know, I don't wanna don't wanna do that on stream. <laughs> but yeah, so you said we got a couple of that does seem relevant to me, by the way. Yep. Uh, um, we got one more super chat, but I wanted to know if you wanted to read this one real quick. What is uh my grandfather? Ah. So Carly Ann said, My grandfather, an ex Pinkerton investigator and state cop, shook his head and said after watching this pod, he goes, This really seems like an inside job after an incident gone wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, I, I look at this and I'm like, this uh, is, it seems to me almost certainly that his friends premeditated yeah. this and set him up either to, either oh, they yeah. handed him over to somebody else who, yes. who did everything or they hit him somewhere. I think it, if he had, if Chris had a boss, my guess is that they, this was a rendezvous. Mm. Um, well, yeah. Bootleggers had two very large freezers in their basement, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm thinking that's where they kept them. But the my question about it is, okay, so if they froze him before rigor mortis, mm -hmm. when he started to thaw, would he go into rigor mortis? So from from my understanding, and limited as it may be, uh, from from reading through the the drowning forensics book and, and doing some googling was that uh, if somebody were to be frozen solid immediately after death mm -hmm. and they the freeze was able to be achieved before, I think, two hours, then theoretically rigor mortis would not occur until after they thaw. Um, well, that's which, what I think. Yeah, I could see that. The The thing that sticks out to me, though, is that his, uh, his lividity was fixed, which means that he must have laid on a flat surface for 6 to 12 hours. I... Uh, before he was moved because if uh, if somebody dies and then the the bodily fluids the blood everything starts to collect at the lowest gravitational point except for points of pressure so i uh, in tommy's case i believe it was his his shoulder blades his calves his ankles his buttocks those areas were were blanched they were pale whereas the rest so, was red right so he was laying down flat he wasn't stuffed in a freezer yeah then yeah that would be that would be my opinion um and and looking at the blood alcohol content, uh, something that I I believe happened with the Todd Guide case as well is that Todd was gone for 21 days, so very similar case. He turns up in the lake, standing up essentially, which uh -huh. is very strange, um, yeah. with a a blood alcohol content that I think was above 0.2, might have even been above 0.3, um, and they found nearby a canoe full of beer cans. So my opinion with that was that he was abducted the night of the party, uh, the night he disappeared, and then brought, held somewhere, and before they put him into the the the, the pond, um, they force-fed him alcohol so that it would appear that he had gone in that night, and they just, nobody considered the decomposition aspect of things. Because, um, right. you know, the, the people who commit these crimes are often not the brightest people on the planet. So, otherwise, they probably wouldn't be committing these crimes um but yet they got away with it yeah yeah well in this case it seems that they got away with it because there are people in the police office who should not be in the police office yeah. but you know that's true for all of them because you know um n none of the ones for the ones for the documentary mm -hmm. they never really looked into any of them they you know they wrote them off as like drunken drownings and left it at that yeah it's i mean there, there are some of these that we look at, and I go, ah, oh, that's that's probably not connected. But then, there's a few where it, stuff like this, where it just, I, I can't imagine how anybody could honestly, at the police level, look look a mother in the eye and say, no, this was an accident. Um, it just the the lack of personal integrity that would be required for something like that is astonishing. He well, never said that it was it was that. He just said that he 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 didn't know how it happened. He said if he was shot, it would be easy. But in this circumstance, he had no answers. Oh no, Even, I'm not I'm not putting that on Doctor Hellman at all. It seems to me that Doctor Hellman was one of the most 
one of the people who yeah uh the detective willoughby is is who's in my sights at the moment um and so from what i understand he was actually fired for misconduct uh sued yeah sued for misconduct sued for when he was captain he was sued for allowing misconduct to occur uh and then uh i think yeah, I can't remember the specific details of the article I read about that, but yeah. Oh, so was... fascinating that he was sued for allowing misconduct to occur. I'm shocked. Given the situation, yeah, there's valid well, reason to be concerned. Because there was no signs of foul play that, you know, there was nothing they could do um, unless they had more information. And I said, well, you know, you guys are detectives. Go detect. Find the information. It's not going to fall on your lap. Yeah, and, and at a certain point, they need to learn to ask for help. Well, and it's also, like, the biggest thing that I find suspicious about that excuse, and I'm going to call that an excuse, because mm-hmm. to me that's what it sounds like, is considering the fact that the area was searched for several days between when he went missing and when he was found, and that he was found in a borderline, clearly staged position, mm-hmm. uh, and that all of the autopsy indication elements, essentially, pointed to the fact that that was not how he... That that was not the position in which he was the entire time in which he had yeah. been gone. Uh, that during the time he was gone, there was no way that he could have essentially been dead all that time, mm-hmm. or like, you know, not. I mean, even like you said, you know, if the body was frozen, it would have been a very different scenario within what would have occurred with the what's the L word again? Lividity, lividity, and everything along those lines. Just like there, there are so many elements that line up together that yeah, one taken at face value in and of itself doesn't scream premeditated doesn't scream you know that somebody would intentionally did this yeah but when you line them all up it's like you have every reason to dig deep or at the very least you know drill into these friends and figure out what the real story is considering it seems that for at least one of them he can't string you know consistent story together to save his life yeah we we always make we we always love to use the joke from Always Sunny in Philadelphia, the Pepe Sylvia thing. Yeah. Where he, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen the show, but one of the characters, Charlie, becomes obsessed with the conspiracy that there's some sort of mail fraud going on, um, and he has a whole board with red lines everywhere and all that, and, and we always like laugh about it. But no, if that's what the the, the police should be doing, that there, mm-hmm. I I want to see the board with all of the red ropes going everywhere, and I want to I want to see that they're actually trying to make connections because. I could see that if you had every bit of this information trickling into you, like, one at a time, maybe you don't see how it connects. But when when I sat down with the case file in front of me, uh, from or the case study in front of me, I was just blown away by, by the sheer lack of intelligence displayed by the police. Um, cool. Which, it, it's either got to be stupidity or uh, malintent. I mean, there's no other there's no other way, way to look at it, in my I, opinion. I don't. <laughs> so, you know, do we, were there anything, uh, was there anything else to come through? I think there were a few. Uh, yeah, for Super Chats, we've got Aquafan for 999 saying, I know it's not much, but I'd like to offer some help and support. We'll be praying for answers, justice, and peace for all involved. We appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Cakes for 999 says it's so surreal to hear all of this firsthand like this. We're all so sorry. Another case to look into, I mentioned the other night on stream, yeah. was the John Lang John case. Lang. Yeah. yeah. That one's definitely going on the list. And then Mandalorian Mama for $5 says, hope this money makes it to the legal fund. Hang in there, Mom and Dad. Yeah, we will definitely we'll definitely be donating st- any Super Chats from this stream um, as soon as there's a place to donate it. And uh, the moment we have an opportunity to to put up a fundraiser, um, we will do so. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank yeah. You. I, I mean, I, I want you guys to get answers. I, I want, I want the police to be held accountable most importantly, but I, I want you guys to have answers and closure and hopefully be vindicated because I think that you guys are completely correct in assuming this was foul play. And I, I don't even think it qualifies as an assumption. I think that the yeah. evidence entirely indicates foul play. I think we're at this point, we can even say that we're, we're emotionally invested to the point where we want answers, you know, to, just yeah. as well like obviously nowhere near as much as we could say for youtube but you know it's it it is extremely frustrating when we come across things like this and we have come across things like this in the past but i don't think to this extent uh where something within the system is clearly wrong uh intentional or not mm-hmm. and that needs to be rectified to the best of its ability and we as individuals want mm-hmm. to pursue that as best we can and and help in any way that we can to find that solution. Did Tommy have other friends? 
outside of this group and outside of Harry? Um, Ryan. Yeah, he did. Would they other. would they possibly know anything? Um, Maybe you talk to them. I have seen them since, mm-hmm. you know, because they they weren't there. But um, I don't know if they would know anything else. Mm-hmm. But you know, we know who who ran who was running the uh, guns, and mm-hmm. we know who that called to him, threatening him. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Corey. Uh, so do you have that phone record? No, but Got it. the other friends. Everyone told me it was Corey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the the reason I ask is that you know I wonder I wonder how far back you can subpoena phone records, but if you can recall the approximate date, and we could track down the phone call. That I mean, there's enough witnesses, and there's a phone record that that might be enough to take to law enforcement and say, "Hey, look at this." Um, you know years down the line uh, i also i mean i also think that these guys uh, i i know from looking at their facebook pages uh that several of them have families and children and um i, I think you know it's a lot easier as a unattached 24 year old to ride or die for your friends um the second yeah. that the police come knocking on your door and you might get your daughter taken away if you don't fess up that's a little different now isn't it um so i mean that's maybe dark and vindictive but in my opinion if you murder somebody then you deserve that i agree the consequences Um, of your actions you have to face it at some point and on the off chance that any of them hurt you know come across this podcast and heard me say that i am so well armed it will make your head spin do not come here (laughs) you You don't you you don't want to meet the claymore roomba (laughs) walk in the door and you're going to hear a fortunate son playing (laughs) Um, but yeah, so, I mean, um, I think, I think that gets us through all of the questions that are here. I'm going to do a quick once over to see if there's anything we missed, but, uh, I'd like to hear what that guy Chris has to say. I think he'd come in for a chat and eh, not willingly, um, but let's see. All those guns. Ah, exactly. It's- <laughs> I, I always joke that I I do know the people to make someone disappear. Uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a drastic, drastic option in, in any circumstance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think that basically gets us through anything. Um, is there anything that you guys would, would like to, to say to people? Um, you know, any anywhere you'd like to direct people for resources of any kind? Uh, you know, should, should they follow along with the... Uh, the in memoriam page in case we we managed to get something set up for a fundraiser um yeah they could do that all right we can it's... share a link to that okay thank you yeah and is the is there anything else that that i uh, that we can do for you no i just want to tell you how much i really appreciate you guys doing this and you know keeping it out there because people forget and it gets washed under the rug and you know, when you don't know what happened to your son that night, you have no closure and, you know, you just, it's, I, I can't even ex- think of a word for it, but I've run so many scenarios through my head trying to make sense of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. Not to mention justice. Yeah, for it's, my... it's just infuriating. Mm-hmm. It, But thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we appreciate you guys, you know, essentially a, a approving of us, you know, doing this kind of stuff. You know, we, we try to make sure that we do things in the right way for, you know, uh, for yourselves. For this exact and, reason. Yeah, for yourselves and people in this position. But, uh, you know, it's nice to hear that what, what we're doing is is appreciated and we're, it's on the right path. And it just gives us all the more reason to keep going uh, and just keep finding answers because that's what we want to do is, is mm-hmm. for cases like this where we don't have the answers – we, we we want to find them for you guys. Yeah, in in any way we can. We also did just get Papa Bear Odin sent twenty dollars for the legal fund, so it's Aww, beginning to be a nice little nice little uh, lump sum there, and uh, I have a feeling it'll rise. I'll uh, I'll utilize that that one point two million TikTok followers. There we go. Finally, have a reason to post on TikTok again. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. 
for everybody watching right now and anybody who will be watching the video on demand later, uh, you know, we we will be setting something up for sure. I know Mattis has referred to that a number of times in mm -hmm. the stream. Uh, do what you can. Like he said, you know, if, if all of you put up one dollar, uh, fairly confident that that would yeah. get us somewhere <laughs> near a close case. If, uh, if every single person who will watch this video were to donate a dollar, then it would raise on if we go by an average about 40 grand, uh, which I assume would be enough to get started. Yeah, at the very least. Yeah. So I'll see what I uh, I'll see what we can do. Um, guys, th thank you so much for coming on and, and talking to us. Uh, this has been massively helpful in terms of, you know, tying together some loose ends and and clarifying some questions that we had. I, uh, you know, we, we will absolutely remain in touch. And if there's ever anything that we can do for you guys, please do not hesitate to reach out. OK, thank you. I appreciate it so much. OK, well. We will let you guys go. Uh, we hope you have a, a good rest of your evening. And, uh, you know, I know uh, I know. yesterday was the, what, the 16-year anniversary? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, uh, I'm glad that we were able to, able to keep the story alive and keep people interested in all of that. Um, Thank you. Yes. So, uh, oh, and we just got another $100 donated for the legal fund by Echo Warrior. Thank you, man. Wow. See? The people Thanks. want answers just as badly as you. Probably not as badly, but very badly. <laughs> Um, yes. Well, thank you guys. And, uh, I'll be in touch about next steps okay. for, for raising money. All right. Thank All you. Right. Bye. See you. Good night. There you go. Give us one second. Oh no. Um, <laughs> you can, hang on. You can rejoin. Yeah. We, uh, Oh boy. Uh, there they go. Now they can see us. If you uh, join now, it'll be bigger. Yeah, but it's going to get weird. No, you're good. Ah, cool. That looks yeah. fine. Yeah, so I. Uh, God damn. I hate Scott Willoughby. Oh, <laughs> I have so many thoughts and theories that I feel like I probably shouldn't say on a live broadcast mm -hmm. right now, but yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, this is. Uh, I am I am currently an Angie boy, so I mean uh, th to to you guys watching. First of all, I, I've been keeping an eye on the chat all night. Thank you for being so respectful of the situation. Obviously, yeah. this is a lot more serious than than our usual uh, podcast content. Um, we made significantly fewer jokes. I uh, we appreciate you all doing the same. Yeah, and and I I am just so uh, the seeing seeing the the donations pour in is so heartwarming. Um, you know, I I think it. I, I look back at what we were able to do this year in terms of raising money, and I mean it, there were I think several thousand dollars for the Gab Petito Fund. Another, I think I think we did hit ten grand, if not so. close to it. Um, for for the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, and now and now you know that's. Three hundred and twenty-one dollars. We'll see what it is after YouTube takes their cut. But, um, you know, towards towards this, I just when we started doing this, it was about I, uh, you know, getting answers for for something that was so out there and so much bigger than us, and never, never did I expect that we might have the ability to actually impact these things and and to be able to speak to the people directly affected and and now i mean we get to we get to offer assistance which is just incredible to me so uh you know thank you guys so much um as soon as we have something set up for for i uh, for funneling money towards a, a private detective we will be doing so uh we will be we will be letting all of you know we'll probably mention it and every video for the next several months, especially all of the smiley face killer ones. Um, and there will be, I would say weekly, uh, calls to action on the, the community page in the discord for, Hey, if you guys, you know, if you can donate $5 today, um, we can, we can really do something. So I'm just, I am incredibly grateful to, to, uh, to all of you for, for what you've helped us do over the past couple of years. Yeah. I mean, it, it I think for both of us, I can say that things like this just make us feel more motivated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
nothing more true to that than seeing you guys being so willing and so generous to donate as well. Um, it just kind of, it makes us all the more confident that not only are we doing the right thing, that we've also cultivated an audience of people that are capable, willing, and motivated to do the right thing as well. And mm -hmm. it just, it makes us feel warm to see that, you know, y'all are, y'all are so supportive of, of what we're trying to do. And it, again, it just, just makes me want to double down uh, on, on what we're doing here. And I couldn't be more proud of, of what we've, we've created of, of all the amazing research mm -hmm. he does and, and everything that we've been able to do as a result of what we've developed here. It's yeah. Um, a big thank you to you guys for that. Yeah. I do want to, I saw a couple of questions roll in. There were a couple of super chats. First of all, Christina Vance, Christiana Vance said, uh, from one mom to another and sent 20 for the legal fund. Nikki sent two and Ryan Whitcup sent five, um, covering the reign of terror. Uh, yeah, I can take a look at it. Um, you might need to be specific about which reign of terror. Uh, <laughs> somebody did, uh, Allison Talby asked, uh, are you branching out from the four on one cases into police misconduct cases? Uh, well, thankfully, we're out of missing 411 cases. I don't say thankfully because uh, we don't have to cover them anymore. I say thankfully because it means people aren't going missing. At least not in the national parks. Yes. I'm sure there will be more missing 411 cases, but uh, for the time being, I'm glad that I don't have to report on more tragedies. Um, so I'm going to stick with tragedies where maybe there's actually something we can do something about it, which is nice. Uh, we started with smiley face killers because we were like, all right, what's another big, you know, group of connected cases that we can investigate and see if there's any real connection. Um, I mean, I'm still skeptical about the smiley face angle, personally. Yeah. Um, I do I do think that the the Todd Guide and, and Tommy Booth cases are extremely similar. Um, so even if they're not a connected gang, I think that there's probably a methodology, I. Uh, you know, which would suggest organized crime, in my opinion. Uh, serial killers tend to be a little bit more specific and individualistic. Yeah. Uh, well, then the cases in Pittsburgh and uh, Wisconsin. Those were very similar. Those were very similar. Those are a whole different ballgame in and of yeah. themselves, whether they're on their own truly or if they are in any way yeah. connected. Yeah, it was, it was very strange looking at the lacrosse in Pittsburgh and how similar all of that was, and then looking at Todd Guide and Tommy Booth. We're definitely, when we get to do the meta-analysis section, there's going to be, like, you know, stuff we think is serial killers and stuff we think is organized crime. Um, and then probably, I, I, with the Missing 411, there was, you know, stuff we think is completely explicable, stuff that's a little weird, stuff that's very weird, and stuff that's completely inexplicable. Yeah. So we'll probably have something similar where it's, like, smiley face killers is not involved, organized crime, serial killer, smiley face killers. Um, so, yeah. I wouldn't be shocked to find that the the specifics here uh, with the, the individual killings rather than the, the mass murders, um, I wouldn't be surprised if those are connected uh, in some way or another. I do think that if if anything, um, if they are connected, it's it's likely due to the, the methodology more so than any one group of people doing it. But yep. uh, also Woken World said these cases make me think about my buddy that went missing back in early 2019. I miss him. Uh, you may have mentioned this to us before and we said we take a look at it and then never got around to it, but please keep reminding us if you did. Uh, otherwise, if you hadn't, then please send something along um, to the, the lorelodge at gmail.com so we at least have it filed away somewhere to take a look at. Um, and, you know, to, to just to be clear, to those who, you know, weren't, weren't able to donate, um, we have absolutely no judgment there. Uh, everybody has different means. Um, you know, if you can, great. If not, if you could just spread the word, awesome. And we'll, uh, we'll put up a whole bunch of different information as soon as we have it. Um, I did see a few more things come through. Yep. Uh, Patroclus, son of, um, uh, Menu, uh, uh, gave us another hundred dollars. Wow. Uh, said I have the ability to share my wealth and I absolutely love you, you guys and what you do. We very much appreciate yeah. that. Thank yeah. you. Get you a medal. Yeah, we should. Uh, Trevor Wilson for ten dollars says, "Let's get in a new investiga investigator." Though they so said they liked the the private investigator appears to have been solid. Yeah, uh, they just ran out of money to pay him. Uh, it is the um, the police themselves who are the problem. So obviously they're not going to be involved in this. Uh, this is this is going to be us coordinating our resources as we are able, and then letting the PI do his job. Because while I feel very confident. In my research skills, I am not an experienced private investigator. 
and I will leave that to the professionals and simply support in any way I can. Yep. Uh, Goosey for $5 says, legal fund plus please share any more information on future donations. I'd be interested in setting up a local fundraiser to support from Dallas. So Dallas, actually, we, we're we going to be covering something soon. Um, I've been hesitant to cover it because it's it's ongoing, um, but it's the Lady Bird Lake, yep. right? Yeah, so we... That's awesome. Yeah, Austin. So yeah. Texas. Um, but you know, maybe maybe we'll find a way to be able to set up a broader fundraiser where it's you know general money that people can request for private investigators and all that. We'll see. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, Karen Jones for one ninety nine gave some. Thank you. Uh, Louis gave some. Louis too. gave some. Uh, Christian Thank Bennett you for a hundred dollars. Thank, Thank you, you, Christian. Uh, says great job, Louis Lodge team, Mister Mrs. Bennett. Thank you very much. Uh, Matt. Uh, 0040 for five dollars says editors are never appreciated enough <laughs> thank you for spending hours in a dark room on career for us i know it's stressful i appreciate that the room doesn't have to be dark hey. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not a darkness yeah person. exactly you you do research in the i dark. know i'm a dark list i done that uh, i know i'm a darkness gremlin i know shut up matt matt i very much <laughs> yeah, i'm kidding i'm kidding Ella's, Ella's angry at me. Uh, Jake Fitzgerald gave us five dollars for the fun. Your mom thing. gave us a hundred dollars for the fun. Mom, thank you for that very much. And All right, then, uh, Spleen, I have. I'm gonna have such good news to send to Barb later. Yeah, absolutely. And then Spleens for five dollars and fifty six cents says, if you guys could get time, you could possibly look into the Noah Pez or Presgrove uh, case out of Oklahoma. Why does that name sound familiar to me? I will definitely be writing it down right now. Noah Presgrove. When did this happen? Oh. So this is recent. Uh, what happened here? Um, found dead on the side of the road on September 4th. Of this last September? Yeah. Um, declared his death suspicious one day later. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll take a look into this one. Wow, Echo Warrior just gave us two hundred dollars. Oh, there you go. You're doing boy, far more important you. work than anything I would spend this on. Like you guys have said, it's up to the community to band together. Also, Aiden's, I can't guarantee anything, but I work for a PI company in Utah, so if I'm able to get help out there, ever please uh, only reach out. We will be more than yeah. happy to do so. And I mean, if we ever come across something in Utah, yeah, um, very much so. Definitely gonna. Well, there was the um. Uh, Bobby Beezup, but that was Bobby Beezup and Dennis, not Dennis Martin. The uh, it was um, the one at the lake. Garrett, that, yeah, Garrett Barkley. That's what I was. Thinking. Those were Utah. Yeah yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. We would we would definitely reach out yeah. to you. About I, that. I think we appreciate that a lot. We've got a couple of things right now that as I've as we've been doing work on this that that we want to set up uh, funds for. One of which is uh, missing persons and suspicious deaths like this allowing families to hire private investigators because that's what i'm coming to the conclusion of is i uh, if the police won't do it somebody will for money yeah um so it, it, that's one thing we want to set up for sure and then the other one was i we're working on setting up a uh, a charity that will collect money to be dispersed to native american communities and individuals uh you know that are that are suffering from um from poverty and, and other issues because the I know a lot of I know a lot that it's a very complicated issue and a lot of the time uh, the the reservations don't want help or they want to be left alone and sometimes they ask for help and they don't get it. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's a simple issue to solve, but the probably the first step is giving, you know, making sure people have the resources to improve. Um, so those are those are the things that we can we can assist with and hopefully we'll be able to to get those both moving uh, sometime in, in the next year or two. Yeah. Uh, and you thank you, Echo Warrior. That is extremely generous of yeah, you. Yeah, incre incredibly generous donation. And I, I do want to follow that, that mm -hmm. up with uh, June Bung Lins at 729's $2 for the fun. God bless. Just want to say, as incredible as Echo Warrior's $200 is, $2 is just as good. Yeah, every know? every small donation helps. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> it's, it's it's not about the amount of money that you give, which it is amazing when you're able to give more. But it, yeah. it's, it's just, if you can be fantastic and obviously it'll be a lot easier to be more direct with it once we're able to set something up that's a little bit yeah. more uh but this i mean towards that this this will all be going there this is money that we get paid out to us in march right yes uh it should be yeah considering it's February. Yeah. yeah we'll get paid out this money in march and it will be earmarked immediately yeah for uh for their use um whether that means that we set up a, a gofundme and make a 
nice big donation to start it off or if we send the money directly to them, I don't know, but we'll we'll see how things go. Yeah, absolutely. And then Miss Maury for $10 says, this is from my roommate who doesn't watch but listens to me talk about what you guys do. He's hugely touched and knew how bad I wanted to help. Thank you for your shedding your life on these cases. Thank you. Of course, thank you. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, yeah, thank you all so much for, uh, for sorry about the dog. Uh, thank you all so much for, for hanging out with us, for, for watching, for supporting. I mean, this is this is incredible yeah. seeing how much, how much you guys have been willing to help. Uh, even, even just if it's $1 at a time. So thank you guys so much. And I, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll see those of you who watch my personal channel on, on Tuesday night. Uh, I think we're going to be doing some music stuff. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, and, uh, if not, then I will see you all next Sunday with, uh, ah, sorry. No, it's going to be Monday. Uh, and we're going to have inspiring philosophy on to talk about the doctrine of the Trinity. Mm, Cause to be fun. honest, while I, I can explain what the Trinity is. I cannot properly explain why the Trinity is. So <laughs> I'm very excited for Michael to uh, enlighten me because a little embarrassing to have a religious studies degree and not be able to answer that question. <laughs> You'll get there. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for hanging out, for watching and for all of the donations. And uh, we will see you again very soon.